Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, this is the second in our series of two webinars focused on Vicenza Oro January, which will take place from the 21st to the 26th of January next year, so just a few weeks away. Um, this time we're going to focus on the market opportunities um, in trade uh, surrounding the show. Um, you know, the opportunities for visiting uh, buyers, uh, wholesalers and retailers. And we're also give, going to give a more detailed presentation of some uh, elements of the show, uh, notably VO Vintage, um, which uh, will present vintage watches and jewellery. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Marco Carniello, uh, the event director. Hello, Marco. Hi, and, David. And by uh, Matteo Pollini, a project manager who uh, coordinates uh, the VO Vintage. Hello, Matteo. Hi, David. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today, um, and thank you for uh, joining us in this webinar. Um, if, if I can just um, ask a, a few questions of Marco uh, to kick off, to, just to step back and look at uh, Vicenza Oro January, the significance of, of the show, Marco. Uh, it comes early in the new year. Um, how, what, what to you is the importance of this show on the global uh, jewelry calendar? Thanks, David, for your question. Well, first of all, let me start uh, with uh, this big news uh, that is also going uh, into the significance of the show. In, uh, in August next year, 2022, uh, it will be 100 years that Vicenza is, uh, is hosting a jewelry show. So we have a great history behind. And yeah. this is obviously something that counts for Vicenza Oro and for our organization. And obviously we changed a lot, especially in the last uh, two, three years. And this is definitely going into, um, you know, new formats uh, and new opportunities that Vicenza Oro is providing to the overall communities. So Vicenza Oro January in particular, is opening uh, uh, the international calendar of the, of the jewelry shows. It's a global event. It's, uh, there are more than 120 different countries that are coming into Vicenza to visit the show. And uh, more or less 35, 40% of the exhibitors are from abroad, from the most representative countries in, uh, in terms of manufacturing or, or services or branding in jewelry. So uh, being uh, in, in Vicenza Oro gives you the, you know, the outlook, uh, you know, regarding the outlook uh, of, of jewelry, of the trends uh, you are, they are coming in the, in, the next, uh, in the next few months and years. So visiting Vicenza Oro is really a must, uh, a must uh, uh, action that anyone in our jewelry sector should do. Mm. Well, thanks for that. And congratulations for achieving 100 years. I mean, so I was thinking that that means that it must have started off in 1922, which of course was just a few years after World War I. And I guess it was the uh, early period of the Art Deco era, which was probably quite a good time for jewelry demand, I would imagine, the 1920s. Uh, so um, probably it got off to pretty well, I would imagine, 100 years ago. It, it might be quite interesting to go and do a little bit of uh, research into um, the early shows. Maybe you can dig something up uh, next August. Uh, very good. So um, back to Vicenza Oro January. Uh, why is the timing in January, early in the new year, so important? Is, is it a good moment to restock for buyers? Absolutely. Our focus has been always the B2B. Uh, so we are looking at the B2B relationship, B2B deals. And that's why being in January after a big peak in the sellout, typically in our consumption, is important to restock for all the year. So after the Christmas period, uh, retailers, uh, big distributors are coming into Vicenza and they and they see what, what they should buy for the, next, uh, for the next months, because the next peak is uh, some Valentine Day, then we have the Mother's Day, then we have the, uh, the summer season, which is very important in, uh, in the majority of our, of our countries uh, attending the show. So it's, uh, it's really a good moment to, to restock. 
And mm. then, uh, he, yeah. Yeah. So, so, could you tell us a little bit about the various market opportunities then that, that must arise, um, and how Vicenza Oro delivers on those opportunities? So, it's a restocking opportunity, but also it's a chance to see a huge variety of goods. There's, there's a lot of choice, uh, you know, decisions that can be made on what what people buyers want to acquire in terms of latest collections, but also packaging and uh, um, loose stones. I mean, t tell us a little bit about the various uh, market opportunities that will emerge um, in, in January. Sure. If you allow me, I would, uh, I would launch a video, a short video yep. for, our, sure. for, for the people connected today, uh, yep. because I, I understand that, that some of those never, never got to Vicenza or needed to Venice probably, which is very close to Vicenza. So I'll, I'll share my screen and I'll, I'll just uh, uh, play a video of the last January show that was in 2020. Oh. Right, here we go. So this was two years ago. So it looks ages ago, but yes. I remember that was... show so well. Just before the big lockdowns uh, kicked off, Vicenza was fortunate enough to be able to actually take place in person, wasn't it, in January 2020? Exactly, exactly. We we closed a beautiful show, one of the our you know biggest show we we never had in Vicenza, and exactly the day after the end of the show, the it came the bad news from Wuhan about the, about the pandemic. So we were pretty lucky to close the, just, just before that. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, and now we are on, uh, on our website, thevicenzaro.com. You can see it here on the tab. Uh, and you can see these all at once. So this is the new marketing claim we proposing for this edition. And it explains well one of the most important value of our show, which is the fact to be all on the same platform, which is a big platform, a rich platform that it connects all the stakeholders and the elements of our community from the technology segment to the brands, going through the gems, the services, packaging, Product producers and so on. And as you probably watched in the spot in the in the video, you saw those uh, names like icon that at some point you saw expression, etc. Those are the names we gave to the districts of our of our fair. So our fairground and the total show is split in different. Uh, areas, segments, we call them districts, sometimes we call them communities, but they are grouping uh, the kind of offer 
with the view and with the need of the buyers. So for instance, Icon. Icon is the area of the high-end branded jewelry. There's a Roberto Coin, there's a Fope, those, uh, those players uh, like these with, uh, with a lot of attention for the brand, from the branding, but also providing high-end jewelry with diamonds, uh, very high precious stones, et cetera. Then we have creation for the producers. They usually, they don't have their own brand, but they market their collections, uh, uh, typically high quality collections to the, to the retailers and distributor all over the world. Then we have uh, the components, uh, so claps, uh, mountings, uh, also very important for our buyers. Uh, and then we have look, fine jewelry, uh, mostly fashion jewelry, with no diamonds uh, usually, but still uh, in gold uh, or, or in silver. Then we have uh, essence gems, diamonds, corals, and pearls, uh, which is pretty self uh, um, easy to understand. So we have the, you know, the loose tones. Then we have uh, essence elements, which is uh, still uh, loose materials, but usually not precious stones, uh, something that it's uh, ready to, uh, to, be, to be delivered, etc. Then we have expression, which is a uh, packaging, uh, visual merchandising, evolution to gold, uh, which is outside of the fairground in a, in a, in a whole uh, uh, a few uh, minutes uh, by, by a shuttle bus uh, from, from, the, from the center of the fairground uh, with all the technology dedicated to the jewelry. And then uh, we also are pushing the delivery part. This is a very new part, is uh, external uh, also of the fairground, uh, is uh, uh, managed by a uh, uh, by, uh, by another uh, company, another organizer, which is Palakis, but it's also part uh, of the district. Well, all of those are districts and, uh, and uh, they represent all the supply chain, all the jewelry community we want to offer to our visitors. Okay, excellent. Thanks so much for that. So that explains the all at once moniker for the show. It's a kind of a one-stop shop for the international trade. All of these various elements are available at the show at Vicenza Oro at January. Um, Marco, can you give a few comments about the overall global market uh, position as you see it for um, gems and jewellery right now? I mean, uh, how is the flow of demand uh, according to what you're hearing around the world for uh, jewellery and gemstones? And what's your view on the outlook for 2022? Absolutely. If you don't mind, I keep sharing the screen so I can, I can show you more uh, later on on, on yeah. other topics. So about the global market today, I am very positive because the feedback we're getting from hundreds of exhibitors from all over the world are very uh, enthusiastic. I know it's kind of counterintuitive to to say that in a, in a moment where we have uh, COVID cases uh, rising again, but the true thing is that the market uh, is actually uh, hot in terms of uh, jewelry consumption. Uh, we can say it from, uh, from the level of manufacturing uh, that our companies are, are actually reaching again. So, the Italian export uh, is basically already at the level of the 2019, which is, uh, which is uh, uh, absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and how to explain this? Mm -hmm. Definitely the first reason we, we talked about together, David, uh, is uh, the, mark, the, the spending mix. Obviously, many of, our, of, of the consumers and, and uh, the, the, the population of the of the markets uh, has been spent have been spending much more in jewelry than in traveling and other kind of and other forms of experiences. So they focused on on jewelry. Uh, the second thing is uh, jewelry and watches tend to be also a, a nice way to preserve your own capital, your own assets, because uh, when you buy a jewelry 
a jewel at the end uh, you you keeping your money uh, in a in a very important way to save them and not in a car or not in, in clothing and the third reason is a little bit more emotional you know i'm an engineer by background so i tend not to be very emotional <laughs> but is a but there's also an emotional part uh, of these uh, of these uh, momentum of the jury uh, of the jury market uh, you know when you are kind of depressed or you upset for 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 what is happening around you uh, you know buying a jewel or, or, or offering a jewel as a gift to someone you love someone you trust etc is a, is a is a is a way to connect you with these people to connect you with your own soul and is a, is just about the emotions the emotions you you have to keep alive have you keep to uh, to express uh, to 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 your world so i think those are the three points why the market is so is so is so good at the moment and i'm very positive it will stay uh, pretty stable in the in the next month so we we'll, uh, we are very optimistic uh, uh, on yeah. our january show and that very much tallies with what I've been hearing separately by going, as I have in recent months, to different trade fairs like the uh, the Istanbul show and Jem Genève and also um, Vicenza um, in September, where the, the, the order flow was very strong. The members of the trade were delighted to gather together again and see each other in person, but also uh, they, they were filling the, their order books um, at these shows. And uh, I, know, I know that Vicenza Oro, uh, the Vicenza trade show in September did very well, didn't it? Absolutely. It was fantastic. Uh, it was fantastic because buyers came, first of all, in high volume because they were only 20% less than 2019 figures. So if we compare September 2021 yeah. with September 2019, only, well, we did 80, 85% uh, of the same uh, visits first. Yeah. Secondly, the buyers, they came, they, they bought a lot. They bought a lot because the stocks were very low and they were very low first because they didn't attend any show before, before uh, Vicenza because unfortunately, our colleagues, uh, the other organizers around the world, they couldn't do the, their shows. So we were basically the first opening our doors. And secondly, because uh, there was a huge accumulation of sellout that you know, exploded in 2021 because 2020 had to postpone so many weddings, so many occasions that were people buying, buying jewelry and they, they weren't canceled, they were only postponed to 2021. So 2021 uh, experienced a huge, num huge uh, sellout that reduced the stock of all the buyers. They came to Sept in September, in our September show, and, 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 the, and the deals were many. Yeah, absolutely, very good. So Marco, do you want to tell us how visitors can register to attend in the end of January? Sure, registration are open since uh, probably three, four weeks ago. Uh, it just, uh, uh, it's very easy. You just go on, on the website, uh, vicenzoro.com. Uh, you, you find here on, you know, on this uh, hero banner with this nice graphic all at once, uh, this register now bottom, you go, you go here, you register, so you click and you go on a page. If you are already registered, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's definitely easier. You see here, I'm already registered. Otherwise you register yourself from, from scratch or you use your Facebook or LinkedIn account to fill in easier the form and quicker. But still, since I'm already uh, uh, a loyal visitor of Vicenza Oro, as you, David, and I'm, uh, and we're proud of it. I enter with your, with the, here we go. When you enter, uh, basically you can, uh, uh, you have already your ticket uh, ready. For instance, uh, 
let's let's see. Here we go. My my connection is probably not I uh, because I already use it. So when you go here on on your website uh, on your uh, uh, your page, uh, you can use uh, let, let's you can press this button use and it appears uh, your ticket you can uh, download uh, you can print it and you can you can get it with you at the entrance of the of the fair very very easy and if you right. if you want to experience uh, you know the 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 online part of high of our hybrid format we have our jewelry golden cloud so the catalog all the uh, let's say all the contents uh, of our fairs are within uh, this uh, ecosystem which is online and which is called jewelry golden cloud you just click in here it's much uh, nicer and useful on your app uh, in fact uh, this system has uh, uh, has born uh, for being used on uh, mainly on the application, but here we are. So here you have a, a variety of, uh, of feature with uh, about the services we provide, how to reach uh, how to reach the fair, where to park, uh, where are the bar and restaurants, uh, some more questions, some more uh, answers about uh, how we provide the safety in our in our uh, in our show. But let's try to see exhibitors. So you go to exhibitors and you have here more than 1,000 exhibitors. They will be at Vicenza Oro, in Vicenza Oro's halls. Uh, you, you can see here them. Uh, you can, uh, you, you, you can uh, filter on, uh, by, by category, etc. But let's uh, go, for instance, on Alessi Domenico. Alessi Domenico is a great chain uh, maker around the corner. Well, now today I'm in Rimini. So, but it, this uh, company is based in the province of Vicenza. Uh, here you can find uh, all, the, all the information about this, uh, about this, uh, uh, this company. And, uh, and the good thing is uh, you see here the team, the people, Alicia Alessi, which turns to be also uh, one of the owner of the family owner of, uh, of the company, you can con contact her and you can even book uh, an appointment during the fair with, uh, with her and with the company, but just uh, one week before the show. So one week before the show, if you enter again on this page, you'll be able to use the features of agenda. So booking an appointment uh, during the fair uh, on uh, with, uh, with all the exhibitors uh, you want. And this is a way to make much more efficient the, uh, you know, the experience uh, in, uh, in the, in, at the show. So if you can arrange all your meetings before coming there, your, all your experience is much, uh, is much smoother and, uh, and probably also the results are much better. So I encourage our, our visitors to get into the website, look for exhibitors, look for, for different products uh, and, and uh, try to have an agenda already preset uh, and uh, being most, you know, efficient uh, in uh, in the in the visits of the of the of the, of the halls so for instance these nice uh, earrings uh, i'm uh, on a, on another on another uh, exhibitor here is una r one of the most famous italian producers and uh, you can see you, you have uh, you have your your uh, pictures here and plus uh, here in a, in a week or so You'll have also the all the events program here, and you can uh, even uh, follow some of those uh, in uh, in streaming. So this is the online part of our hybrid show. Excellent. Um, could you make a few comments, Marco, about T Gold, um, the machinery um, part of the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the exhibitors and the offering that will be found at T Gold. Absolutely. 
Tea Gold uh, is uh, basically one section of our Vicenza Oro, is a, is a show that we, we have uh, exactly in the same dates and in Vicenza, very close to the fairground uh, in January. It's all about uh, technology and machineries for jewelry. It is definitely one of the most uh, interesting show in terms of technology in the world. 150, 160 exhibitors, uh, 65, 70% of those are Italians. Well, Italy in this regard represent uh, the, the excellence uh, uh, for technology in jewelry. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's natural that, uh, that, that is uh, so big uh, in, uh, in this all. But the other 30% uh, is made by Germany is made by Swiss, uh, US, uh, Great Britain, uh, and so on. And here, basically, you find everything you need to, you know, to produce, to produce and to process uh, and to, to cut, uh, to 3D print uh, your, uh, your Greek collections and wherever. It's a, it's a very successful show, and we are investing so much in these because we, we think technologies are very strategic uh, to, to keep... Uh, the momentum of Vicenza Oro and to, you know, to again have all at once uh, all the supply chain, the same platform. All right. Well, thanks so much, Marco. So um, if I may now turn to Matteo. Hello, Matteo. Welcome. Uh, to. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, one of the key segments of the show is the uh, VO Vintage, uh, which just came into the show a few years ago. Can you tell us what VO Vintage is, first off? Yes, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And Vio Vintage is basically a show within the show. We could describe it like that. Uh, it's a show completely focused on vintage uh, timepieces and, and jewelry. Uh, it takes place in Hall 8.1 of the Exhibition Center. And it, its dates are slightly offset from those of, of, of Vicenzaro. So Vicenzaro takes place from January 21st to the 26th. Uh, whereas Vicenza or Vintage takes place from the 22nd and uh, up to the 24th. So as you, as you mentioned, David, Vicenza or Vintage is a fairly new project within the Vicenza or ecosystem. Uh, the show, in fact, had uh, its debut uh, back in January 2020. Uh, so it's now reached uh, its third edition. Uh, so the purpose of Vicenza or Vintage is to interpret uh, and, and, and intercept the, you know, the uh, ever-increasing demands for collectors and enthusiasts of vintage watches and jewelry uh, with an offer from some of the uh, most qualified dealers uh, in, in the sector. Uh, all of this, of course, is always kept maintaining uh, our standard as Vicenza Oro, so we guarantee the quality of the selection of exhibitors, of course, the safety standard, and and of course, uh, the warm and welcoming visitor experience that uh, defines all of our shows. Uh, so lastly, um, but it's, it's, it's a fundamental peculiarity of the show, is that uh, if Vicenza, as Marco said, is open uh, to, to B2B professional visitors, uh, Vio Vintage instead is also open to the public. So also the general public can actually uh, access, access the show. Okay, very good. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about the overall market backdrop to vintage uh, watches and jewellery? Um, I mean, certainly in my own experience talking to jewellery retailers in the UK, I, I know that, for example, pre-owned watches are doing extremely well. Um, I mean, what, what is the uh, market um, view on, on this segment and, and the outlook for 2022? Yeah, sure. So to, to answer this question and to get like also a broader perspective on this, uh, I'd like to quote uh, the latest McKinsey report uh, on watches and jewelry markets that has been published on Business of Fashion uh, in June 2021. Uh, this is interesting because the report of McKinsey here, it identifies uh, three seismic shifts. Uh, that are shaping the watches industries, as, as, you, as you just mentioned. And one of these shifts, in fact, concern the pre-owned uh, market, uh, which is, and I'm, and I'm quoting, set to become the industry's uh, fastest growing segment, and it's expected to reach between 29 and $32 billion of sales by 2025. So it is indeed a market 
that has a great potential and that we're focusing on. And, uh, and this and is led by leading brands, isn't it? And uh, for example, a pre-owned Rolex, Omega yes. in the mix, so high quality brands. Absolutely, yes. And um, on our side, of course, with, with Vicenza Ro Vintage, uh, we, we, we offer uh, a response to this need of luxury vintage. Um, and of course, it's a sector that is growing fast, not only for the uh, you know, uh, ever increasing uh, demand of watches as investment goods, uh, as, as, as Mark also briefly mentioned before regarding jewelry, but it's also due to the increase uh, of, of, of purchases of fine jewelry and watches that is uh, influenced by um, su sustainable consideration and, and, and sustainability consideration. So yes, indeed, it's a market that is that it's uh, evolving, and then, uh, it uh, looks like it has a very bright future for the uh, upcoming uh, few years. Okay, great. So Matteo, can you show us the location uh, for Vio Vintage? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll just share very quickly. Okay. So this is the general uh, Vicenza Ro layout. So uh, as I said, is a show within the show. Why is that? Because uh, right at the entrance of Vicenza Ro, one of the two main entrances of Vicenza Ro, uh, this in particular is entrance West three. Uh, right here on the first floor, this entire floor is occupied by uh, Vicenza Ro vintage. So, um, it's of course it's 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 a small show where we have uh, you know a very interesting selection and that's a very important important uh, word that I like to use when I when I, when I talk about Vicenza or vintage, and uh, yeah, but it's very easy to access. It's very well connected to the rest of the show, so B two B visitors can you know go uh, through the entire show, whereas uh, consumer visitors can only access this area and are not able to go through the rest of the show. Show. Um, but you know, it's, it was very important for us to give to give to Vicenza Ro Vintage its own identity. So uh, the the um, idea that 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 this location conveys is that of an exclusive, you know, a reserved, warm and welcoming environment. Uh, we like to call it, you know, like also a, a lounge uh, because it's it's really a sort of a, a, a decompression area where you also have as a visitor the opportunity to have a look at amazing pieces that are uh, only available in this in in this area very good and can you give us an idea of if you like the proportion of exhibitors that would be watches and the proportion that would be jewelry yes yes absolutely uh so maybe i can Oop. i'm having technical issues of course uh well of course i'll just interrupt my sharing on the screen. So yeah, uh, the, the, the proportion actually, we try to maintain the proportion pretty uh, even uh, uh, between jewelers uh, and, uh, and watches exhibitors. So uh, in general, we can say that it's evenly split half and half. So uh, approximately it's uh, 18 exhibitors uh, of the jewelry section and 17 exhibitors of the, of the watches section. Um, but uh, very important in this regards is the selection, as I mentioned before, that, that we go through for, uh, for, for each of the, of the dealers that are present in this area. In fact, uh, this part of the show right now is currently on uh, invitation only on our site. And this is important because it allows us uh, to build a show that you know, revolves around the community and also uh, around the, the, the trust of collectors and of partners and of course of other exhibitors. Uh, so rather than hosting a very high number uh, of exhibitors, we rather focus on the quality of the selection and of course on increasing the trust level uh, uh, on, 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 on each dealer and, and, on, and on the dealer that is participating to the show. And this is vital and key also to, to you know, pro provide a further reassurance to our visitors. And could you tell us a little bit about the seminars and discussion panels? 
Yes, yes, absolutely. So of course, as uh, and as, as all of our as all of our shows, uh, which and Sour of Vintage, uh, uh, you know, revolves around uh, around the ideas of communities, and all of our shows are designed around communities that you know fuel 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 the industry. Uh, this means that uh, the pillars of education, information, and networking are for us bedrocks for a successful show. So uh, I would like just to mention, uh, you know, the two educational courses that we've organized with uh, Foundation High Horology and our two courses uh, on chronographs and uh, on watch movements and perpetual calendars. And then there will be also, you know, numerous watch technical classes throughout the weekend that are, that are organized by uh, CAPAC. And, uh, and of course, um, the vintage watches and jewelry communities are, are further involved, especially the web communities with, with partnership with some of, of the, you know, uh, most active web communities uh, online, such as Watch House. So if you're interested, uh, the complete program of the courses are uh, available on the Vicenza Vintage website. And currently, all talks and, and courses are, are held in Italian. This is definitely something that we're working on in the future to open it to, you know, also uh, international, in, international uh, courses for, for our international visitors. Okay, excellent. Well, thank you so much, Matteo. Um, we're just going to wrap in four minutes. We're doing a 40-minute seminar, a webinar today. So uh, I just want to go to the Q&A, where we have one or two questions. Um, uh, there's a question from an anonymous attendee. Uh, the exhibitor list is great. Uh, we used it last time to prepare our visit. Uh, when will the complete list be ready to review for the upcoming uh, Vicenza Auto January? Um, Marco, do you want to answer that? Uh, when will be the list ready to the review? The complete list. I mean, uh, is, is, is the list already complete? Um, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The list is already complete. The only thing is coming up uh, in the next weeks is the possibility to exchange messages uh, uh, with the exhibitors and, uh, and set up appointments, set up, you know, book uh, your, your meeting. But you, you find all the list there. Uh, you may not find all the contents of the exhibitors because the exhibitors are uploading day by day, new things, new content, new contents, new images of products, et cetera. All right. And the last question, um, we have a viewer, uh, Aman Chohan, uh, asking for your views on the future of diamond jewelry. Uh, I presume that's it. You know, what are your thoughts about the future of the diamond jewelry uh, market, uh, Marco, especially in view of, say, segregation between natural diamonds and lab-grown diamonds? Um, how, how do you see the market evolving in the future? And also in terms of Vicenza Oro, um, do, do you anticipate that in the coming years that there would be uh, a, an increased offering of lab-grown diamonds and lab-grown diamond jewelry uh, in the mix? Uh, a, this is a very big topic and is a topic that we are keep on discussing every edition uh, of Vicenza Oro, in particular also to the view of Sibjo, uh, uh, because uh, because uh, in here it coming uh, the, the the sustainability uh, issue, the sustainability element. Uh, so we see a great uh, great future of the of the natural diamonds uh, as uh, as uh, proved uh, by the the recent months of sellout, because all our high end jewelers are are you know selling very well. And definitely will be a space also for, for the lab-grown diamonds. It's just a matter of uh, being very transparent and clear to consumers and uh, differentiate the, the, the offerings, just that. You know, the day by day, we need to be more true, more true with the customer, with the consumers, and, uh, you know, just, uh, just being uh, very transparent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, uh, Marco uh, and Matteo, for joining me today for this presentation. Uh, Vicenza Oro January will take place between the 21st and the 26th of January 2022. So do please book uh, your tickets now, um, and we'd be delighted to uh, see you at the show. Uh, so thank you very much indeed, um, and um, happy holidays, everybody. Thank you. Bye. -bye.
Thank you, David. Thank you, everyone. See you in Vicenza. See you in Vicenza. Bye. Ciao.